Welcome back. And not only have we, do we have Alex Cabral joining us, who happens to be a local, one of our local board members, but also the co-chair of the main race, which we'll get to in a minute. Yep. But you have a friend here with you today, Alex. Who yes. do we have? This is Noelle. Noelle is a sweet beagle. She's about seven years old, and she's been at the shelter about a month. Um, this is the second time she's been at the shelter. The people that have uh, brought her to us had to move to no pet housing. She's a fantastic girl. She's good with kids. She's good with cats. She's just a love. And um, she's a wonderful girl. Aren't you, Noelle? And she wants to visit with everybody. She's so excited. Well, Noelle. Thank you, Noelle, for visiting. <laughs> hi. Did you say hi to everybody? Thank you, Noelle, for visiting. <laughs> but Alex, the Humane Race, ninth annual. Yes. You've been the co-chair for nine. Maybe I shouldn't be telling you this, which you already know, for nine straight years. Yes. It's gotten bigger and better every single year. So tell us what's going to go on with the Humane Race this year. Well, first of all, I'm very excited because I have a, um, an, an announcement. We have a new title sponsor. Ah. Ah, uh, Greylock Animal Hospital in North Adams is going to be our title sponsor this year. So oh, we're very, very excited about that. And uh, the race will take place on Saturday, April 30th in Williamstown. And um, hopefully someone will adopt Noelle and bring her because she obviously needs to get some energy out. Uh, the one thing about the Humane Race is great is that you can run or walk with or without your dog. So um, How long of a race is it? It's a 5K fun run or a one mile walk. And um, it's, uh, it's right in downtown Williamstown. I'm gonna let the dog go because <laughs> she's gonna start knocking down equipment in a there second. She there she goes. goes. Bye, Noelle. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Noelle. Bye, Noelle. <laughs> and um, so uh, the race is 5K or one mile. We go through downtown Williamstown. Great uh, location. Yeah, it's really fun. We have support from all the local merchants. Um, this is relatively new. This will be our third year in downtown Williamstown. We used to do it at Mount Greylock High School in the in the back, but this has given us a lot more visibility, and people just seem to have been more excited about it now that it's downtown. Um, and uh, all the money, of course, that we raise goes to the Berkshire Humane Society. And I think over the past nine years, we've raised, we've raised, um, you know, about eighty-five thousand dollars wow. for the Humane Society. And over it all the goes years. back to helping the shelter animals. Yes, and and we've raised that money not just by. Um, the money that people, you know, rent, pay to register for the race, but we've also, uh, you know, we go out and actively get sponsors, and we have a lot of wonderful sponsors who've supported us for a very long time. Uh, and we, it's fifteen dollars to pre-register, uh, or it's uh, ten dollars if you're a student. And um, so, if you don't do it until race day, it goes up $5. On race day, it'll be $20 to register and 15 if you're a student. And chances if you wait to race day, you will not be getting one of those special t-shirts. Yes, and we have always just done 100 t-shirts, um, but because we have such, we're growing so fast. We are, we are. <laughs> Yay, we're going to have, um, we're going to make 150 t-shirts this year. So the first 150 people to sign up, and you can go to our website, which is www.humanerace.org, and registration is up and running. I had to, you know, bullwhip my husband this weekend to get him because my co-director is my husband, Brian Cabral, and he's yes. also my webmaster. Yep. So he got he works the... works very, very hard. He works very hard. He, he has works, no choice, but he works very, very hard. <laughs> and he, he's um, finally gotten the website kind of up to date. So the registration's available, to, ready to go. Uh, as I said, humanerace.org, you can register online or you can download a registration form. I think it costs a dollar to register online, so. And you can also raise money by walking. So you can go out and get pledges, correct? Yes, yes. And we will give some a great prize for uh, the pledges raised. Um, we usually do it in two different age groups. Right. Uh, and we've had some people who've raised a lot of money for us over the past few mm -hmm. years, but we could use some more people to do pledges. It would be great if we had some more people doing pledges. Um, and that also, that form is also uh, available on the website. And of course, in um, the next couple of weeks, or probably in, in more about four weeks, 
uh, you'll start to see posters up about the race and you'll see I'll have a registration forms and pledge forms in local stores around Williamstown mostly and, and of course at the Berkshire Humane Society. Society but it's so easy to do on the website so um, and you're and guaranteeing good weather this year John let me just say that I am due. You're due to a good day. Last year, we all. Biggest race, biggest, <laughs> biggest humane race we've ever had was last year. We Participants. Had, yeah, we had, well, we would have had, I think, 300 or plus people had yes. it not been torrentially raining. But it was torrential. It, it was, it, but it was fun. And it fun rained harder once we were the race began. All in it Everybody together. Everybody was wet. <laughs> and knowing that that many people showed up on that type of day, knowing because it benefited the animals right. but it was uh it was actually ended up being a great day and i believe right when we were breaking up at the end it stopped raining yes of course yeah. so but this year guaranteed good weather we're absolutely going to have good weather this year um no question and uh so please come on out everybody okay. come on out and come and do the humane race it's so much fun, a lot of fun. we have a dj we have lots of fun food we have some fun activities. And I we're promised have a couple fun activities. Why don't you tell us about well, you know, our fun We're going to do one or two different contests at the end of the race for those that bring their dogs, and that number's growing as well. Um, you know, we may do the fastest biscuit eater contest. Yeah, we may cute. do a musical sits or downs, uh, something that you don't have to require a lot of training. The only thing you have to do is show up and have a good time. Right. So we'll have some activities at the end of the race. Of course, we'll have Berkshire Main Society's tent with all of our promotional items available um, for sale there as well. But one more time, Alex, why don't you tell everybody how, if they're interested in the Humane Race, how to get a hold of you? Uh, well, they can go to the website, humanerace.org, uh, and get all the details. We, you can get fully updated. They can contact me at info at humanerace.org. Uh, and, um, you know, just my other contact information also is on the, on the website. Um, and I think that uh, they should remember that the party at the end is just as much fun as the Absolutely. run walk. And if you are going to really run it, get your dog out there soon and yes. get him fit. So that Absolutely. Absolutely. They're not <laughs> volunteers. Passing you out. any volunteers for the activity? Um, well, that's, that would be great. If people wanted to contact me, if people were interested in volunteering for the race, please do contact me at humanerace.org and um, info at humanerace.org. Because there's many people. How many people do you have volunteering that day? And I, I, you know, I get a it? lot of Williams College students right. who volunteer, but I, I do have to say that I could use some help planning and executing in right. advance if people are interested in getting involved in the planning committee. Yeah. Um, and uh, so there's there's a lot that people could do if they're interested, and and of course just coming out on race day will be tremendously supportive. Awesome, which is Alex. Thank you for for joining us, and thank, thank you, you for John. bringing on Noel even though she left us a few minutes early here, but <laughs> no that was problem. okay. And uh, Thank you for having We're going to take another break, view some more animals available for adoption, and we're going to come back and, believe it or not, Alex, for the first time, we're going to try and bring a guinea pig and cat on to the studio at the same time. So <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, and uh, once again we have Aaron joining us. And I was just saying off camera that Aaron's going to be our Jack Hanna of the Berkshire Humane Society because uh, last month we did the we talked about rabbits, and uh, today she's not only brought guinea pigs, but she's also brought a little kitty that has a very special story. But let's start off with guinea pigs, Aaron. Welcome, and uh, you know guinea pigs uh, the fourth most common animal surrendered to the shelter, and um, how frequently do they come in? 
we almost always have at least one, if not two, guinea pigs or cages going right now. We've got a couple of brothers right here, so they're occupying one cage. We also have another one that was surrendered and was pregnant, and so we've got four little babies as well. So they were born about a week ago, and I was asking you. Two weeks you, today. Two weeks today, two and weeks I was today. asking you the week leading up. Yeah. Was, it, was there any news, any news? And then one day, there they were. So that was about two weeks ago. Life expectancy of a guinea pig? Anywhere from four to eight years. Average is five to six, but. Okay. Do they make good companions? They're extremely sweet and they're friendly. They're a little nervous about being picked up, but once you've got them held, they're very calm and gracious and they get along great with other animals. So they're good in almost any household. They're good for kids, relatively easy maintenance that kids can help with, so. Ah. What about, um, you know, they're good with other animals, but do they like to be housed together? Do they need companionship? They don't need companionship, but they definitely do better in, better in pairs or trios, and they like having mates to play with. So. Okay. Proper housing. Proper housing. Let's start with that. Okay. I know you've got a, you're, you're really, this is a carry, carry this, cage you This have is our transport here. cage, right, but a cage very similar to this with a solid bottom and then the cage part on top. The cage these boys are housed in is about three times the size of this. Um, they like huts, plastic or cardboard, something they can chew on, but that's not going to be detrimental. Toys and shoes, they're very active and they romp around. So give them places to hide when they want to, but things for them to keep yep. them stimulated. Yep, and it's nice and secure just in case you have your friendly household cat that, that happens decides to decides like to jump walk. up on top and watch them, right? right. <laughs> and um, you know what, too, as I'm looking at the, the bedding in here, you know, for years people use pine. It's pine shavings pine is bedding, cedar, but right. I noticed that we use something different at the shelter for all of our, all of our small mammals. What, 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 what's the what's the bedding? This is a, a recycled paper bedding. Um, it's softer, and there's no added chemicals or dyes to treat it that's going to get absorbed through their pads that can harm them at all. It's much safer for them, less risk of health hazards. So. Okay. Okay. Diet. They just like a bunny. They need constant hay and fresh water. They make pellets to supplement the rest of their intake and fresh veggies daily. Okay. Have you seen an increase? Uh, I know when we see the movie uh, 101 Dalmatians come out, all of a sudden there's an influx of Dalmatians. And I know G-Force was a movie that came out a year or so ago, I think that Disney put out. And have we seen, have you seen an increase in, in guinea pigs since that movie has come out? They definitely became more popular as pets afterwards and then about six months down the road we started getting more calls about people surrendering guinea pigs because their children lost interest and all of a sudden the fad had passed and uh, there's an overflow again. Certainly it's very is. Sad. What I'll do is I'll help you open this cage yeah. so we can put our little friend back in there because I know you brought a special kitty with you as well today. Boy. Okay. And before we get to the kitty, if someone's interested in, in the guinea pigs or has more questions about guinea pigs and potentially is wondering if they have an appropriate home for them or not, Erin, how do they get a hold of you? I'm at 447-7878, extension 24. Yep. And Erin, as I forgot to say earlier when I introduced you, is our small mammal uh, expert. So um, she is the one that's taking care of all of our small mammals. So. <laughs> You brought a very special kitty with you today. I did. This little girl is named Melanie, and she is a year and a half old. Whoops. Nice catch, Erin. She's very, thank you. Lots of practice. How she's, old is she again? She's a year and a half. She's very sweet, very gentle. She has some medical conditions. She's got problems with her heart. She's got a quite significant heart murmur, as well as a thickened heart wall and an issue with one of her valves. So she's going to need to be watched very closely, monitored carefully. And she is on an, right now she's on an aspirin regimen twice a week. Um, they don't recommend anything else right now as far as medicine is concerned. What are those? But um, definitely constant care and potentially even seeing a cardiac vet. Okay. So Now she's already been spayed. Yep. And I know that when we have our, our volunteer veterinarian that comes into the shelter on a weekly basis, they always we always check up on her and make Absolutely. sure she's okay. But she can live for many, 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 many long years. Right. Again, she's very young. She's only a year and a half. Uh, but we are looking for that special home because it looks like there is going to be some special care. Absolutely. Um, they're interested in Melanie. How can give you a call as well or call the, the feline staff? Yeah, which is also extension 24. So same number. <laughs> How many cats? We'll talk about cats for a few minutes since, you know, it's not, we may not be able to bring them into the studio all that often because it is somewhat stressful, but she's doing really, really well. 
How many cats we have at the shelter at the moment? Um, at the moment, I'd probably say upwards of 60 or more right now. We do have um, an upper respiratory going around, which limits our availability to put cats into a certain room. Unfortunately, it also means that all of our incoming cats are kind of stuck where they are when they come in. Mm -hmm. So right now, all of our rooms are full. So. Okay. Because I know when we get into season, right now we don't really not seeing any kittens. Although we've had an older litter come through mm -hmm. recently, but um, those numbers will certainly rise as, drastically um, in the next couple of months. Yes. Yeah. And the guinea pigs say that as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Aaron, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you for joining us. And we want to, again, thank everybody for watching this week's show. And I want to pay, uh, pay special thanks to uh, Aaron for coming in and Alex, also Alex Cabral from the Humane Race and Terry Bazilian who talked about uh, volunteer opportunities at the Berkshire Humane Society. And again, thanks to the whole cast and crew who volunteer their time to produce this show. And uh, hopefully you'll tune in one more day to watch again Per Wag Adopt next time from here at Local Cable Access Network. Thank you. Thank you.